I fell to the floor because I was devastated um, for what I was going to have to tell my kids. Later in a blog post, Shanna's mother said she was not invited to the funeral. His family did not invite me or want me there. But the day before a vigil hosted by Jared's widow at Celebration Park, Shanna was photographed at the park with her kids by the tabloid Daily The tabloid Man. presented the facts in a way that leave room for speculation about Shanna having a role in Jared's death, citing their rocky divorce papers and her absence from the funeral. Even though we didn't always get along, he was still the father of my kids. As I said, we've been divorced. We don't run in the same social circles. I, all I know is that I would never want anybody to go through this. I wish things could, could have been and could be different. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the state's key evidence in the Jared Breidigan murder. And this is the key evidence concerning Shanna Gardner and Mario Fernandez. I wanted to also note that I requested Mario's file and he has hired mitigation specialist Brooke Butler and there is a motion to compel contact visits because Mario Fernandez has been moved to a part of the Duval County Jail. It's called the John E. Good Pretrial Detention Center and I'm guessing because Brooke is a PhD and not an attorney that is why they are not granting her visits. I also wanted to mention that there will be a witness in the upcoming trial who was Henry Tennant's roommate and one of Mario's tenants. And also there will be an upcoming video that I'm putting together about Mario's home that he shared with Shanna and how he might be using that sale to pay for his lawyers. And as this evidence has been reported in the media and online. I just want to say everyone is innocent until proven guilty. And as these witness lists are released, I want to do my best to absolutely protect the anonymity of these witnesses who did not ask to be a part of this hideous murder for hire that took Jared Breidigan's life in 2022, February 16th. And as we reach the anniversary, the two-year anniversary of Jared's death, let's remember the Brightigan family and his wife and all of his children and our thoughts and prayers are with them. But I also want to thank the Justice for Jared B. Facebook page for verifying some of this information that I have been researching. Also, WJXT. News for Jax and First Coast News is doing a great job covering this local case that is local to my town and and definitely with uh, friends and family who know these families, it is definitely close to my heart. I also wanted to note that I got Shanna's jail file most recently in the new year and the last visit from Patrick Cordy was an expired visit. December 28th of 2023, and he also visited on December 11th of 2023, along with Jose Baez that same day. I just want to mention that I'll be sharing some of the emails and also the custody paperwork in this video, which are going to be key evidence. So let's get right into it. So the tattoo artist that is a witness in this case, one of the key witnesses alleges that Shanna asked if he knew someone that could shut up Jared Brightigan. So according to this article from the Daily Mail UK, Shanna had been talking to us about her divorce and she told us her life could just be better if he could just shut up and asked us if we knew anyone who could shut him up. The employee who wanted to stay anonymous said, I did not take it at the time as anything nefarious. He added, according to Fox News, in hindsight, I see now that it can be taken differently. Detectives attempting to find answers in the case interviewed the worker who said Fernandez complained that Brightigan was trying to take all of her money. He added that he was a little surprised that Shanna, who looked like a regular mother, got piercings in a very private place 
on her first day visiting the shop, but became wilder and wilder as she returned. She went from this goody-goody two-shoes girl to a wild lady, he said, and I just remember thinking, well, this is a changed woman. The employee of this tattoo shop, which I am not sure at all which tattoo shop in Jacksonville, but he and Shanna became friends after the piercing, and she brought it up at dinner at a Jacksonville restaurant called the Flying Iguana, which... I've been to many, many times. It's a wonderful gourmet Mexican restaurant at the beach. It's great and definitely loud place where they could have this conversation. And probably she could brush it off to alcohol or something. All right. And the next thing I want to talk about is the emails, the heinous emails that Shanna wrote to Kristen Brightigan asking for Jared's death certificate. I believe it was about 12 days after his murder. And it's just very suspect. And also, Shannon was asking for library books back. And at that point, Kristen was probably beginning to suspect some very, very difficult realizations that Shanna could be very involved in the death of her husband. According to Jose Baez, there are about 80 witnesses. I heard at one point there were about 100, but on the list that I saw on the Justice for Jared B. page, it was about 80. Um, There's a lot of things that the the state and the, the defense have to go through, so it should be really interesting to see who makes this final list. Also, the divorce filings, I heard were very tumultuous. At one point, Jared said to his lawyer, this is enough. I should have every damn right on my own property to not constantly be under recording or monitoring by Shanna. He wrote to his divorce lawyer, May 17th of 2015. I want the flipping gates of hell released on her for this. And allegedly, Shanna had tracking devices on Jared's car and baby monitors in the children's bedrooms to record conversations. So in addition to the divorce filings, there are about seven terabytes of emails and text messages from this case, including these divorce filings and text messages between Shanna and Mario and Henry Tennant. I also wanted to mention this alleged yes day that Shanna took her kids on very soon after the murder to kind of entice the children to want to stay with her and her family to buy them whatever they wanted to let the kids rule the roost, kind of letting the kids take over for a day, letting them do whatever they want. There's a movie about it starring Jennifer Garner. I also wanted to mention the driving route that Jared took that day along American Avenue, which I did in another video. I titled this video, The Drive, because I reenacted the drive, which was a shortcut. Only Shanna would have known that this was Jared's shortcut. And I'm sure that the police and the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office have information and communications between Shanna and Mario that night. And they were together to communicate this to Henry Tennant. So this driving route is very, very telling because it was very dark. And according to Justice for Jared B., they had informed me that the lights were installed on that street to provide more lighting so nothing like this could ever happen again. And also they have a wonderful memorial to Jared at the, at the beginning of the street where he lost his life sanctuary boulevard another thing that is kind of incriminating to shanna and to her parents the blog so shelly was taken down and there is an excerpt that i'll read to you which had to do with the funeral plans that shanna's mother was writing about their celebration of life it says after shanna along with anyone who knew her was uninvited from Jared's funeral services. Shanna and the twins planned their own celebration of life. It was so sweet to see 
Liam and Abby, surrounded by family and friends, as they recalled happy memories of their dad. Just before sunset, everyone cut flowers from beautiful arrangements and walked over to the dune together and tossed them into the ocean as a farewell. The guests received heart-shaped cookies made by Liam and Abby with their mom's help, of course, to thank them for joining the celebration. The event was filled with good food, lots of visiting, and an enormous amount of love. So this is from the blog, So Shelly, on March 21st, 2022. And I'm going to go into the gardeners, the grandparents, and their role in this. I have the custody papers and... I'm going to read that in in a minute, but uh, there was a lot of outrage about the funeral celebration was said to have uh, be a taco memorial on the beach with photographers and jet skis and paddle boards and, and apparently that was definitely seen as disrespectful by the Brightigans and They were uninvited from the funeral for a reason. Shanna was acting very suspicious after another memorial. She showed up to a park uh, the next day, according to the Daily Mail, just to kind of uh, play in the park with her kids or something. But anyway, I want to go on to the transcripts that were just requested by, I believe it was Shanna's attorney that's requested. This paperwork has been filed by Shanna, and it says, Shanna Lee Garner, by and through undersigned attorney, respectfully requests of permitting the defendant to obtain the transcript of the grand jury testimony of witness K.J. And the grounds are as follows. A consultation with the assistant state attorney regarding the origin of certain statements alleged to have been made by the defendant, it was determined that the witness K.J. reported the statements made by the defendant during an unrecorded interview at the state's attorney's office. I'm not really sure who KJ is. I'm assuming it's their initials. And there was one person with the initials KJ on the witness list. And this person could very well either be a teacher at Shanna's school, which there were some statements alleged to have been made by the teacher at her school, or it could be the personal trainer. And just as a side note, I have discovered that the gym that Shanna attended with these personal training sessions was a CrossFit gym called The Hive, and we will protect the anonymity of this personal trainer who will be coming forward in the trial. It is a very nice gym. I drive by it almost every day. It's about a couple blocks from the beach. I noticed that there is at least one witness from this gym, and this could have possibly been the gym where Mario did maintenance work. So that brings me to the teacher's quotes at their private day school. I believe it was the discovery school, some kind of discovery day school that her twins went to. And this person said that Shanna constantly making disparaging comments about Jared. All right, and that leads me to the grandparents, Shanna's parents taking custody of the kids. Let's go ahead and take a look at the custody petition. It's about 10 pages. I want everybody to take a look at this minor guardianship petition that Shanna's parents, Sterling and Shelley Gardner, filled out. This had made headlines because of some lies that were told in this document. It was filed September 28th of 2023, 155 p.m. in the Benton County Clerk's Office. And this was probably filed in Washington as if any of you have information why they chose Washington, whether they have family or friends there right in the comments below. But as we know now, the grandparents have taken the children to Utah. As far as we know, Sterling and Shelly have a beautiful house in Utah, but they very fast and furiously filled out this petition for custody. And it's pretty clear that they are not 
allowing the Brightigans, any of the Brightigans to see the twins. So let's go ahead and scroll. The Gardners live in Alpine, Utah. That's their primary address. I looked it up. It looks like a large plot of land and a big, gorgeous house. I'm sure the kids get whatever they want from the gardeners in this agreement, except for any contact with the Brightigans. As we scroll down, I wanted you all to see this, that no emergency guardian has been appointed. For example, if anything happens to Sterling or Shelley, they did not appoint anyone on their side of the family and the Brightigan side of the family. I thought that that was very weird. Parent number one is deceased and parent number two is detained, which is true, but they did not discuss this before they took the children to Washington. Okay, they did say that the children have grandparents, Gaylord and Joanne Brightigan as paternal grandparents. I'm bravo to them for noting that, but they currently live with Shelley and Sterling. This is what got the media's attention. During the past five years, have any of the children lived outside Washington state? And it says no right there. And that is a lie. They lived in Jacksonville Beach with part of the time Jared Brightigan and his wife, Kristen Brightigan and with Shanna and Mario. So it says, do other people with legal right to spend time with a child? They said no. So that's not true. They have cousins. They have other people on Jared's side that have been trying to get in touch with them, which I've seen the text messages on the Justice for Jared B page and been posted on Instagram. This is just heartbreaking. As I scroll more, we just see that these are just blatant lies. I also have speculated that there is a tax credit of $3,600 that grandparents can claim for raising children. I'm not saying that that's a huge motive, but it's not nothing. They do get something out of this. And some people are just greedy. They try to get as much money out of every situation as possible. Some people have said that they have filled out marked no by mistake. It doesn't seem like it. And it says, and, and what I said before about the tax, claiming the tax subsidy, they did mark that box. The guardian has a right to claim the children as dependents for purposes of personal tax exemptions. They'll make $3,600 per child for raising these children. So let me know in the comments below what you think about all this. This is so heartbreaking for the Brightigans and my heart goes out to the Brightigan family as they try to regain the custody of these children or even see the children for these siblings to see each other. It's just so ridiculous and I can't believe that this is happening. It's honestly just like the Markell case where Shelly, Phil, and Ruth Markell barely ever see the boys. And when they do, the the Adelsons have completely taken the boys away after the murder of Dan Markell. It's the same thing as the murder of Jared Brightigan. So I hope that you guys enjoy this and more videos to come. I want to talk about the arrangement of the house and the money that Shanna and Mario made off the house in the next video. And what I think and other people have speculated, the marriage was part of the deal that Shanna could have possibly married Mario to sweeten the deal and given him the money from the house that they sold as the payment without having it look suspicious. So let me know in the comments below what you think of any of this evidence. If there's more, write it in the comments below. Hope you all are having a wonderful new year and, and thank you so much for watching and liking and subscribing. Have a wonderful day.